Hey. Welcome, welcome everyone to Bitch Sesh, the Real Housewives Breakdown Show. I'm Casey Wilson. I'm Danielle Schneider. Welcome. Welcome everybody. Happy to be here today. Yeah. Uh, before we start, Danielle, on a slightly more serious note, I would like to dedicate this episode to someone, a fan. Yes. And a dear fan of ours, and just simply say that this episode is dedicated to Teresa, mm-hmm. uh, a friend, a fellow soldier in the field, yeah. a fellow uh, Housewives lover who loved the Housewives show, even though her brother and parents hated them. <laughs> and she was she, she a, stayed strong. She stayed strong mm-hmm. in the face of that. And she was a... Uh, she's a friend to our podcast and was a loyal viewer. And we just want to say uh, we're thinking about Teresa's family yes. and sending love. Yes. Thank you. Um, Danielle, shifting gears. Shifting gears. We have some big announcements today. Wow. I We have our work cut out for us, but I, I think we're up to the challenge. I don't. You don't? Are no. you worried about uh-huh. it? Uh-huh. I don't think we can do it, but no. T- time will tell. <sighs> I resist work. I take it on and then I get lazy. Oh, me too. I want to get the job and then forget it. <laughs> oh, I was doing Mindy Project yesterday. When I tell you I was having a blast shooting, but now when I'm at any type of work, even this, I'm like, yeah. when's it over? Yeah. <laughs> I'm always like, I want the job and then I, I want to get paid and I want to get fired immediately. Is My favorite is when I have a job, but I know I don't have to go there for a while, which yes. is a rare occurrence, but it will happen. Oh, that happens every once in a while. That happened to me. I had some like time between two jobs this summer between um, It's Always Sunny and Playing House. Yeah. I had I knew I had a job coming, oh, which was the best. There's nothing better. But I didn't. I knew that I had like a month off to just be myself. Everyone listening is like, fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah. We go to a nine to I fucking know. seven I every know. goddamn yeah, but day. Know that during this time, I don't make money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not working. No money is coming in. My child is starving at home. So mm-hmm. there's that. <laughs> yeah. Everybody know that. <laughs> we have, wow. I, let's just get into it, Danielle. Yeah. Guys, you've asked, and I, I think we have responded, which yes. is that Danielle and I are taking our little show on the road. On the road. It's very exciting. And we're starting with two cities. Yes. We're doing, we're starting. Starting a tour. Um, first off, we're going to San Diego, November fourth, and then the next. And where is that? What, in what California? Th- no, no. Oh. <laughs> what, what theater? In San Diego, we are at the Observatory. Guys, I think tickets will be up soon, so we'll we'll keep the we'll send a link as soon as we have it. But you can also refresh that page, and those should be up soon. Yes, and then on the very next night on November fifth, we are going to be in San Francisco. Nice. At the social hall. Guys, we're so excited. There's going to be Whispering Angel galore. There's going to be Danielle and I. So many funny things we'll talk about. Special guests. We have very special things prepared for both shows. Both shows. We're so excited. And then after the holiday, it is our sincere hope and goal. We know we're going to be in New York. We'll get those dates out. And then Mm -hmm. we're... You know, we're taking it on the road. Yeah, guys. So, you know, if you have a city. Any excuse for us to leave our lives and families behind <laughs> and go and sleep go in a w- red roof in. Yes. Oh, I miss the red roof. <laughs> I'd love to do like a TGI Fridays while we're out. Oh, or, you know, I, I'll i take a Cheesecake Factory anywhere in this world. Danielle, me too. I just want that, you know, a salad as big as my head. <laughs> yes, a salad that's in its own form, 5,000 calories. Yes, I want a salad drizzled with bacon. I want a Dr. Pepper in the biggest gulping glass I could get with free refills. I want... But it feels nice. I want a, a sugary breadstick. Oh, God. <laughs> like those brown sugary... Yes. That you smother with butter. I just want to, like, shove it up me. Me too, me too. <laughs> Too. I want a buttery Chardonnay that oh, is just a buttery so Chardonnay. thick. It, it, it's like molasses in the glass. I want a piece of cheesecake that the two of us split, split with dignity, and we still can't finish it. And there's Oreo, so and we push big. it away, feeling good about our night. But then we put it in a doggy bag and eat it at two a.m. <laughs> That's what I want from while this tour. watching Storage Wars. <laughs> Dream. I mean, that's a dream vacation. <laughs> Honestly, I'm really excited. Yeah, and guys. while we're just saying quick updates and then we will get into the show, we are also doing some other shows mm-hmm. near and around the Los Angeles area. Mm-hmm. As many of you know, and this show is sold out, but you never know. Sometimes tickets pop up. If you tweet us last minute, we always have some <laughs> extras we can just give away. Yes. Which is October 27th at Largo. Miss June Diane Gunvalson Raphael by Aileen 2 <laughs> is going. Her full name. That's her Christian name. That's, that's exactly. Uh-huh. And she He's going to be our special guest and it, there will be a costume parade. Yeah. So come dressed as your favorite housewife or Southern charmer. You know, the Bravo universe is wide. I want to say something that I'm sure Largo will not appreciate. Okay. I want to say if like 
you can't get into the show, just show up in your costume, mill about in the lobby, get your wine, and can't we just let everyone up on stage for the costume parade? I mean, I would like that. I don't know. <laughs> Guys, this is not sanctioned by Largo, but I'm we're saying, just you putting know what, it Danielle, out there. They always say, what's that whole, that saying like, don't ask if you don't want to be told no? Yes, Danielle. <laughs> So That's how I live my ask. life. You really do. I'm learning from you. I really am learning. No, from you know you. I always park in reds. I did too, and I got a hundred dollar ticket yesterday. <laughs> Danielle, I'm going to tell you it's the energy with which you park. <laughs> no, I've been parking brazenly in that spot for a year when I drop off my daughter from sc- at yeah. school. Do you throw on your hazards or no? Yesterday, I didn't. I I that was whimsical and didn't yeah. even throw on the hazards. Okay, and so I went and then I dropped her off and I saw our good friend Morgan. Our our kids go yeah. to the same schools. We had a chat and then a mother comes running up to me. Is that your car? And I was like, What? And sh- there was a man giving a ticket. And I was like, No! And I screamed and I was like, I'm just dropping my daughter at school, please. It's like I've heard that one before. And and then he and I was like, Look, there's children going in there. And then he said, He's like, Sorry. No, I believe you. Yeah, I'm just giving like, you a ticket. Care. They handed me the ticket and I said to him with a menacing look, I'll tell my daughter you say hi. <laughs> Oh my I god! Lost it. I was so angry. That's such an expensive ticket. I have to say, Danielle, I I'm coming at this from a different place oh because my, my father has always taught me from a little girl that like you can park anywhere, and it's <laughs> a family. I don't want to say secret because it's not a secret. People have been shocked pre 9 11. If uh-huh. my father had a business meeting, and by the way, we were not well well off. I just uh-huh. want everyone to know that up front. If my dad had a business meeting, he would go to Reagan Airport, and he was always running like at the least an hour late. <laughs> He would show up for the airport and he would do some calculations. This happened, he said, over 10 times. He would show up at the airport and be like, you know what? If I miss this flight, I could miss that possibility of business, that meeting. Uh He would leave the car running out front and make Reagan Airport his own personal valet, (gasps) knowing the car would be towed and he'd know where to find it. (laughs) He is a genius. Honestly, that is a talent to have that. Th- that much chutzpah <laughs> and to calculate like I couldn't do the calculations of that he's a, a lot of people wouldn't do the calculations <laughs> and even when they came up with those numbers they're like I can't cross that line in life with myself and I feel like but there are people <sighs> like me who aren't that but then when they try to we get caught I one See, time that's what I'm saying it's energetic Daniel. it is you I need one to time, know going into it you're not getting caught. I one time had a job at MTV and they would cost you know costume us or whatever and I had a friend that was like that we worked together and she would steal the shirt off your back and not even give a second thought she was a oh, sociopath I don't know that I'm like that well, no. <laughs> starting to say sociopath she's a sociopath like you uh-huh. and so um, and she and she would steal things from the like MTV wardrobe all the time like without a care in the world just take them home yeah. not think I never did the last day of production <laughs> I stole one pair of sunglasses put them in my purse and Ooh. said goodbye I'll never see these people again there's no way have a nice life me. have a nice life I got a call oh. that night <gasps> did you manage did you go off with a pair of sunglasses from production did you like, go oh I, oh, oh uh, la, la, I don't I don't think so. I, I don't, I, 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 <laughs> and you're like on the beach I with know. the blinding sun I think I had to like drive out to seaside heights <laughs> New Jersey to like hand them back to the MTV beach house I was like, so like on my own dime and my friend was just like sitting in a pile of stolen goods and like but it was because I couldn't do it with like any and so yes that is why I got a ticket yesterday see I will just say to you I park in reds a lot and I I park haphazardly partly because I'm a terrible driver but also it looks like there's been what I try to make the crime scene look like is this so, there's an emergency <laughs> I want someone to look at my car. Do you blood on your car? No, but I park at an angle and I will throw the hazards on and here's why. It's like, I'm not showing total disregard. I'm crazed. Something's <laughs> going on that only, only a someone in this mental state would park in this way. But you know what? I'm going to put my hazards on because it's the least I can do in this situation. And I'll tell you what. Have I ever gotten a ticket, Danielle? What? Not once. I once got a ticket in I'm my own driveway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Danielle, it's just, I don't know, you know. We are who we are. And you know, so our parents have different lessons that they pass down to us. My parents was all like guilt and shame. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's always like, fuck big government. <laughs> Literally, you know, last thing, you know, when you get in the car, my dad's car, like it beeps if you don't put the seatbelt on. Uh-huh. My dad inexplicably every time yells the government. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're on us. Yeah, I'm like, well, we are to save our uh-huh. lives. 
quickly last two shows and an abrupt shift of yes. thought um <laughs> after that largo show we are going to be doing entertainment weekly pop fest on october 29th i know what you're thinking are we overexposing ourselves yes but, but we're it, happy to i'm happy to give you guys all of myself and my body and that one's going to be really fun and, and that one correct me if i'm wrong we're going to watch the pilot episode of orange county yes we're going to watch the pilot episode of orange county so if you're coming to that you can watch it beforehand and we'll discuss we'll show yeah. some clips and then the very next day we are dragging our asses to Anaheim yes for the now hear this Earwolf Festival tickets are still available discount code is housewives guys join us and we're gonna be for that one watching the first episode I believe of Atlanta Atlanta so guys we have some fun stuff going on and there is one more show <laughs> sorry <laughs> November 30th our last show of the year we are doing a holiday show guys we're going to make it nice. Very nice. <laughs> Real nice. So it's going to be a holiday theme, guys. It's and those tickets have just gone up. So November 30th, it's really going to be special. Yeah. If you thought Dorinda's Christmas decorations were good, she's got nothing on us. We're going to have an old cake on a new cake. <laughs> it's going to be delicious. Yeah. So many cakes are going to be shoved together for that. <laughs> um, before we introduce our guest, Danielle, you had something you want to share about yes. your weekend. Well, I traveled this weekend and did a lot of fun things. I went to Arkansas for a game, for a football game. I went to the South and then I went here and saw the Dixie Chicks. Oh. So I had a real Southern. You went here? Yeah, here. I went here. I went here home. <laughs> um, a real Southern fried weekend. But um, I, it's getting chilly. So I brought out a leather jacket <laughs> because yeah. I felt like, okay, it's fall. It falls in the air. Oh, that mine's do out. This. I felt Uh-oh. in both locations that I was the only one sporting leather and that people were looking at me. I felt like a real Terry Dubrow. What? Because it felt like I, that they're out now. That oh they're, no one's, I literally Our went. guest is shaking her head, yeah. but you're wrong. Yeah, so I felt, I felt April? uncomfortable. They're in? I, felt I don't uncomfortable. know, I can't I trust April. One. She's so friendly. <laughs> I know, and also she can make anything work. She can make anything work. April, yeah, April's like, wearing right now a uh, bright blue and red and yellow Adidas like w- tracksuit warm-up sweatshirt. And she's never looks sexier. <laughs> I'm dying to rip it off her. <laughs> Oh, guys, April's back. Yes. yes. Uh, we missed her. April is bopping around Switzerland. Uh, if you guys uh, check out her Instagram, if you want to see what living the life is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I felt like a real Dubrow. So I feel like I'm retiring it and I need a new winter jacket. Any suggestions from the, oh, from the crowd? What about, great. is this out? Because I'm toggling between a, a black leather jacket from Madewell, which also feels like it's cute, but like. Mine's if you're going to go leather, like, should I have gone? I went Zara, so I went a step down. <laughs> yeah, June Diane really? is a gorgeous Zara leather jacket, and June and I both wore them out the other night, and Did I you? don't know as I'm saying it. Maybe Were we you the only have. ones? Have we? I didn't see too many others. <laughs> I know. I felt oh alone. What? I'm so sorry. No. I quickly, uh-huh. and then I know we've heard some feedback about how much Danielle and I talk about our personal lives, and well, we're going to swiftly shift yes. to our guest. <laughs> but Danielle and I, oh, Danielle, sorry, June and I went out to dinner with Matt McConkie, who's our movie critic. Yes. And our friend Laura and Miss Kulop. Mm-hmm. And the other night, so June and I are in our leather jackets. Mm-hmm. I think I felt looking very on trend <laughs> and good. And Matt and Laura were there. And we went to Sunset Tower, which is um, kind of a little bit of like an L.A. It's a scene. A scene okay. kind of restaurant. But the lights were low. We felt so great there. Yeah, of course. The lighting is so good. Beautiful. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So we're sitting there and all of a sudden our friend Laura, who's just like a delicate flower, never raises her voice, mm-hmm. never is always so perfectly appropriate. She'd gone to the bathroom. She comes back. She grabs Matt by the shoulders with the urgency. I truly thought someone was dead. Uh. And she goes, Matt, Matt. And Matt just looks up and goes, is she here? <laughs> Guys. What was transpiring? I came to learn was that in the bathroom, Laura had spotted Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> All she needed to say was Matt, Matt, and Matt said, is she here? Oh my God. It was an electrifying moment. Laura was like, she walked upstairs, meaning like to a hotel room. Like she's no longer like milling with the people. And Matt was gone. <laughs> now, look, he did. He said he, he had to stop at the bottom of the stairs. He's like, I can't be following someone like down a hallway to their room to get a photo. Can't and then you? we sent cool up off. We're like, go get, take photos of this. And I'm picturing like they're talking, they're mm-hmm. chatting. He didn't see her, but it was just so amazing that Matt knew in the back of his head that Jennifer Aniston likes to go to Sunset Tower Bar. Wow. She was apparently wearing a very cute casual top. And that's all I have. And not a leather jacket. I feel like she's always doing leather. She is. Okay. Well, I won't retire it quite yet, but it felt 
odd. I think it's okay. You could also go to like, although are these out? You know, those like when I say camo, I don't mean a camo print. I just mean that green, like that army green kind of. Oh, like a, like a, yeah. Oh, I thought you said camo, not camo. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a green, I don't know. All right. Well, any suggestions? Any suggestions from our listeners from our boots on the ground? I think be? you look great in leather. I Thank think it's you. timeless. Oh, Speaking guys, of jackets, yes. our guest is in a navy blue blazer. She looks gorgeous. She came in a hat, a floppy hat, reminiscent of... And don't of, think I haven't noticed your love bracelet. Yes. I mean, she's in a, she's a red nail. A vision. <laughs> she's a vision, and it's 8.30 in the morning. Yeah. This girl came, and she... If anybody comes in less now unacceptable she also brought with her uh gwyneth paltrow cookies from it's all good it's all it's good, all good. <laughs> it's all good it's all good and w another treat which we'll talk about in a second please welcome nicole shab Ty. also her credits let's not oh, okay nicole <laughs> is a writer she's a performer right now she's writing on american dad maybe you've uh, seen that television uh, show yeah she also wrote on filthy preppy teens and she is a writer of trump family fan fiction which i didn't even know was a thing on her twitter <laughs> on her twitter so please check out her twitter nicole so are these short <laughs> they're very short. <laughs> very short very short um and you guys can look at this on her in uh, her twitter which is shab S-H-A-B-T-A-I-N for Nicole. Welcome, Nicole. Nicole. Okay. I am so honored to be in the nook. <sighs> We're happy. So happy to have yeah. you. This is a dream. And oh, really. You came early on a morning because we had to, we're doing a morning show. I would come in the middle of the night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you came with cookies and you also came with something else. Guys, what Nicole handed to me when she walked in, not even saying hi, just handing <laughs> me a business card, which I thought was her own. But and it's no. not new. No, it's, it's like it looks as like it's been worked it's over. Tattered. <laughs> it is tattered. It's been in my it's back been pocket. In your back for seven oh, years. and it shows. <laughs> it is a business card slash headshot of one Miss Jill Zarin. Yes. <laughs> and guys, it has her cell phone on it. It does. Now, do we call her right now? <laughs> I, as much as I will park willy-nilly in a red, I cannot uh, participate in the call. I will watch. Okay. I'm too terrified. Me too. Guys, I'm going to call Danielle, what are you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> but you have to put it on speaker. Oh, of course. Well, what are you going to say? I don't know yet. I'm going to Can you just say you're a fan? I'm going to say I'm a fan. Guys, oh everybody God. ready? But then what are you going to say, Danielle? I don't know. I'm going oh to have to leave it to the gods. <laughs> Okay. Danielle, say so you're a huge fan. You, you you just wanted to say, say that? hi. Oh, that's so weird. Yeah, I know. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> oh God. There's no hazards we can put on for this. <laughs> I'm terrified. Yeah, Danielle, you should just say yeah. who you are. Oh my God. You have Oh, oh, darn it. Ugh. Darn it. <laughs> guys, well, she okay. wasn't there, guys. It was a bummer. I'll keep trying off air. <laughs> we sh we should have <laughs> had like Amy Phillips doing her like, I said, we're we turning into shock Aaron jocks. Oh, we're just like, we're calling them. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to know. Yeah. I wanted to ask how Allie's doing. Guys. And Bobby. Yes. I, you're brave, Danielle. Yeah, that was I, really brave. Yeah. Well, I'm not shy about that. Nicole, thing. you're a big Housewives fan. Oh, guys, I am the biggest Housewives fan. What's your favorite city? My favorite city is New York. I'm from New York City. I'm from the Upper East Side. <gasps> I'm like of the world. I mean, no, I'm from the world, but not of the okay. world. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm of the world. Um, I go to boutique. No, I'm not. Nicole, is there a chance you don't know that you're you are of the world? No, I'm definitely okay. not of the world. <laughs> I uh I, I have a very unique, I would say, upstairs, downstairs perspective on the world. Tell us more. Um, because uh, right Them after, being downstairs, you being upstairs. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. No, uh, very much the opposite. I um, So after college, I worked as a bar mitzvah dancer. Um, what? Do you guys know what that is? <laughs> yes, uh, I'm away. I'm okay. Having been to many, yes, I do. Okay, so basically I'm, I'm from uh, New York City. I went to like New York City private school, grew up on the Upper East Side, but then like went to college, came back and became a bar mitzvah dancer. My parents were very proud of it. Yeah, it um, seems like what yeah, is well, a bar mitzvah dancer? A bar mitzvah dancer, is, the PC term is party motivator. Um, <laughs> so basically what that means is that you are hired to... Um, Have sex with the boys? Exactly. <laughs> it's like a stripper for children. Um, no, you uh, you have to like mingle with the kids during like th these like very fancy cocktail hours so you can like get them on the dance floor later on. How do you mingle? Do you introduce them like, hi, I'm Nicole. Exactly. I'm much older than How you. How do you mingle? I was like... I. 
I'm a very, I'm an outgoing normal yes. person. Mm-hmm. Um, but for some reason, whenever you're, I got into these situations, like I became like a very awkward, weird 13 year old myself. Yeah. Because you're being hired to like chat up 13 year old. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was very weird. Or so could you drink? To uh, no, you can't be- drink. Yeah, you yeah. can't drink? No, 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 no. You're like, you're like the help. Uh, so yeah. basically, I'll just tell a really quick story. I did this like bar mitzvah dance. Uh, I, I did this bar mitzvah at the uh, Randall's Island Golf Center. Mm-hmm. So it's like batting cages, mini golf, and it's like two hours of cocktail hour, which is my absolute nightmare. <laughs> but I find out that like this kid went to my school. So I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to talk to them about. So I go up to this group of kids and I'm like, Hey, you guys go to Horace Mann, and they're like these like gorgeous thirteen year old girls. Gorgeous, girl. take it easy. Put they it. are. <laughs> they're like girls and like thirteen. They're they're like uh, they're wearing Hervé Leger and like Christian oh the girls. girls. I thought you oh meant the God. guys. No, I was like I'm like a pedophile. <laughs> I was like Nicole. You no. get in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, they're these like gorgeous thirteen year old girls. Okay, they that look I believe. Like <laughs> the Real Housewives. You know? Oh yeah. Um, and I'm like, hey, you guys like go to Horace Mann and they just like turn away from me because I'm the hell uh, they like will not talk to me oh my god I know it was so you sad got they were, I got snubbed, snubbed. Uh, yeah. so that's when I say like I'm like you're like a very nose girls like Kristen Teichman <laughs> <and I'm, laughs> yeah I uh, I really am like uh, I have the perspective of like both sides yeah um, of this very weird world so New York City is like my your playground my <laughs> <laughs> playground isn't um, that what Jill Zarin said yeah. New York exactly. City is my playground <laughs> oh my um, gosh yeah Cool. So I uh, so I basically did this show at UCB uh, during the time, which was like about a 13-year-old socialite on the Upper East Side who we never see. And we learn about her through the people in her life in the week before her epic bat mitzvah. And one of the characters was Jill Zarin. Um, I did like, I basically like did Jill Zarin as like this desperate woman who really wants to be invited to this bar mitzvah. Wow. Um, and, uh, and basically I like- Is she calling back? She's calling back. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Shh, shh. Hello? Who's this? Hi, this is Danielle. Hi, it's Jill Zarin. Oh, hi. I just wanted to call and say I'm a huge fan. Oh, thank you. I'm a huge fan of yours, and I just love everything you do, and um, I miss you on The Real Housewives. Oh, you're very sweet. Well, thank you very much, and happy New Year. You too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Time is- god i am shook <laughs> uh, 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 danielle you've got balls you are i was you are nicole amazing. and i were cradling each other and rocking back and forth <laughs> oh, she, was she, she was lovely she was lovely she was and no? you know what if someone had called me like that i would have been, been like, like who the fuck is you? this Yes, she now has my number. FYI, and none of that. And by the way, at no, no point did she say you. How did you don't call here again? <laughs> Who are you? No. Oh my god! Who, Thank what, where, why, when? She <laughs> said, in fact, she went a step further and said, "Happy New Year." Happy New, Happy year. New year. She could tell I was Jewish. <laughs> That was amazing. You know what? I really thought she was really sweet. Yes. She was. Wow, Jill. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, Jill. We love you. We miss you. Oh, my God. You know what? We vowed to never have a housewife on the show, but wow. we still didn't. We still didn't. Not in any way. We will be sued for this because she did not know she was. And we will release this yeah. without asking. <laughs> <laughs> but what a trooper. <gasps> wow. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> wow. That. She's amazing. You know what? God bless. God bless to call back. Yes. I'd just be like, you know what? That was, I'm sure, a creditor for my proactive <laughs> payments that have lapsed. I'm never calling that number again. No, she was lovely. We want you back on Housewives. Thank you, Jill. Danielle, you greatest. were so confident. I don't know why. And you had nothing to say. <gasps> nothing. Absolutely. I thought, at some, yeah, I thought at some point you were going to give like a, I'm from. Uh, no. You were great. No. I you were calm in the storm. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm imp- deeply impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, you've given us a gift. Yes, you oh, have given us God, a gift. Oh my God, you guys. Thank you so. Aaron has given us a gift. Wow. I've always said that she is a great gift. I want her back. Me too. Me too. Andy, I know you're listening. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> Andy, I know you're not listening anymore, but please. <laughs> well, that was just lovely, guys. Oh what a God. nice surprise. And you know what I'm... Oh, wow. 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 
Should we get into New Jersey? Yes, oh, we should. Guys, New Jersey this week after that. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm well, okay. so <laughs> wow. shocked. Wow. 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 <laughs> okay, I have a little boots on the ground gossip about New Jersey. Okay. Ooh. Now, much like Bethany and Tom in the Regency, I cannot say who my source is. Okay. But just know it's a real source. That's how real it is that I can't say it. And you know I will tell anything. I heard, unfortunately, that Jacqueline is mentally unstable. Like, for real. Really? Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. But it's interesting because I, I, I'm, I'm personally saying this, like, Am I crazy? I don't feel like she showed it that much until recently. No, it's been a, like a, 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 it feels like a sudden decline. It doesn't feel like it's been subtle. And we've seen flashes. But everybody has flashes of insanity. But it's funny because the women where the craziness is just right out there, like your Danielle Staubs, yes. for instance. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I, it, it's actually a little darker with this Jacqueline stuff because I'm like, something's off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It feels strange. Yeah. And out of the blue. I know. I mean, and, and you know, Teresa said it this week. She goes, she's nuts. She's nuts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Teresa never seems to have her be in full voice. No. Uh, and when she's talking to her kids, too, it's like, we're going to <laughs> I know. Like, she's <laughs> always <laughs> drinking tea, but it's like she's never getting coated. No. <laughs> I think she's drinking a black tea, not yeah. an herbal, yeah. not an herbal softer tea. <laughs> I, I'm not bothered by Teresa this season, guys. No, Neither I, am I. I, mean, uh, I have a bigger question, though. Is Siggy's hair real? Mm. I think it's real. It's so long and luxurious. Yeah. Is Siggy's mole real? What mole? What mole? <laughs> <laughs> what? Are we all watching the same? She has like a beauty mark. Where? Where? Well, on her face. <laughs> what? Like Cindy Crawford style. Am I imagining Maybe that? Maybe it was on her lip or just like something. Oh. Yeah. Doesn't right. she have a Cindy Crawford? I guess she, she does. does. To me, I, that's like I the can't. center of her beauty. Oh. I I think she's beautiful, but I can't picture it. Maybe it is there. I guess it is. I ha- Maybe I'm so focused on her hair. I haven't focused on her face. I do like her highlights. If she's we gorgeous. Talk, they're kind of caramel colored. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Yeah, I love her. Yes. I love her. She's the greatest. Her outfits this week. <gasps> the oh. leather. Yes. And yes. And what leather. was that deep purple? Uh, I don't even know what it was. Uh, Guys, I don't want to brag, but um, I do have one of the tops that she was wearing. Uh, where? From in where? the first uh, scene that she was in, in um, Dolores' house. Where'd it's you get it? from Intermet. Oh, um, which one? The one, it's like a high neck. Yes. I actually bought it with Danielle Pally. Daniela Pally. Yeah. Um, and uh, it has a, uh, it has like ties. I on feel it. like Danielle Pally's always at Intermix. Oh, yeah. 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 She has a good sense of fashion. She's oh, gone. yeah. She's, she's helped my closet. She's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have, well, I have the top and I just... I well, you should, be, pr- you should be proud of that. That's a good thing. <laughs> can we talk about a fall? They appreciate can we, that. Can we talk about a fall so that was said on the pot, uh, not on the podcast, on the show this week on New Jersey, which was Dolores saying, there were 500 people at my gym this weekend. Oh, I don't God. believe you. <laughs> I do not believe you. You've her. taken a lot of umbrage with her gym. the gyms of the housewives. Yes, I, I don't respect any of the gyms of the housewives. Whose do you think is doing worse, Tamara and Eddie's or Dolores's? That's a toss up because Tamara and Eddie's is smaller. Or Al- uh, Alexis Bellino's husband's trampoline I park. think that's doing best. <laughs> I believe that that is doing fine. I think they just bought a new house. I believe the trampoline thing is doing great. I think Dolores's gym looks like an old airplane hangar and there is no way that they are filling that with yeah. people. I'm yeah. sorry. Just, yeah. They're going to do a ladies night, though, you guys. It's They're, they're going to do it. <laughs> I know. Dolores is a big cue for me. She's got to go. Yeah. But I respect her too much. I think she's just a decent person, and that's why she's got to go. I don't respect her. No. But, no. but I feel like she's got to get off this, like, anecdote about the zoo. Have you, in every oh, yeah. testimonial, she, yeah. she keeps doing it. She's like, she doesn't know what part of the zoo she's in. And then they'll cut to her again, and she's like, you can't feed the animals, Jacqueline. And then they come back to her and she's like, get some cotton candy in that zoo. I'm like, okay, we, I don't know even what this metaphor is, but it's, I think it needs to be done. Yeah. Her and Siggy are like the Greek chorus this year where they're not a part of the action. They're just kind of like narrating for us and commenting on it and trying to stay out of it and trying to be in it. And with, with Siggy, I feel like it's working. Although I'm like, Siggy, what do you care? Yeah, she, she Siggy cares. seems shocked. Sydney, Siggy really is having PTSD from the fighting. 
I believe she is mm. out of her, she's never seen anything like she these She was crying. Women. Yes, and days later, like she's shocked to her core. She cannot get over this. She's and I really get mad. that. Like I, I finally kind of touched down on it a little when she said like I left my family and I left my husband and my kids to go on this trip and I would be annoyed. Yeah. But I'd also be reveling in the fact that people were fighting and it didn't involve me. Yes. To not- I'd be as happy as Vicky was in <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> no, true. Because I'm like, why do you care? And then to turn it around on herself where she's like, I feel like you think we didn't have your back. And Jacqueline's like, I wasn't thinking about you at all. I, 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 it got a little weird for me with Siggy this week. I'm like, you're this is too much. Yeah. I just I don't know that she's mentally okay with being on this show it might it it might disturb her in a way that you have to have a thick skin and no conscience i feel like siggy what do you guys think might be on to try to get another dating show like i think she's yeah. better served yes. somewhere else agree and i would watch that show oh yeah. yeah but i also feel like she is at her core a fixer and this is something that cannot be fixed so it must be just destroying her inside right you're right it can't be fixed it can't no. be fixed it can't be fixed. people are broken right. <laughs> morgan our friend pointed out that it really bothers her and this really made me laugh that joe and Teresa are constant joe gorga uh-huh. and Teresa, they're always stating their relationship status with each other it's like <laughs> you're my brother joe and joe's always like as your brother Teresa," and she's always like she's my sister it's like we know it, it's, it's like when you're writing in in it's tv pe- and movies and you're writing exposition yeah, and you're like, like pilot. Well, you're my brother so you're trying to tell the audience it's your brother but you're like yeah. Nobody talks like this. Yeah, yeah, Every yeah. pilot is like, hey, Megan, look, I know we went to NYU together and we're not falling <laughs> out, but look, just because you're my brother doesn't mean I'm not going to tell you the truth. Like, it's always just like you're just like, you're the boss around here. <laughs> <laughs> you're my second cousin twice removed. <laughs> oh, TV writer TV jokes. Tie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I cannot stand Envy and everybody that works there. Disgusting. Kim D. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, and the posh fashion. The posh. She's a shit stirrer that nobody wants. No. I don't understand why she's still even on the show. She really turns my stomach. She it's does. Disgusting. And no one believes her. She's also <laughs> she's a fucking... disgusting. <laughs> you guys. Raves. Nicole. <laughs> I really think that she is the female Donald Trump. <gasps> Whoa! Agreed. Right? Isn't yeah. she just like and a disgusting, Jim Edmonds is the male pile Donald of Trump. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. She is, Nicole. She's just like a garbage human being of just like darkness. And spreads, and, yeah. and she spreads foul odor where she foul. Got, like just foulness and, and nasty. Like, oh, but why do they keep having her on the show? Because I also feel like it, like I want, yes, I like that those side characters stir drama, but she's a liar too. So if we can't trust the drama, right. then who cares? But who cares? so when she brought up that Joe Giudici was cheating on Teresa while she was in, is, are, are you guys saying that's a lie i don't i'm saying you can't trust her right i'm saying that like it could be a lie it could be true but if we can't trust our source then where are we (laughs) well we are nowhere then because we've been relying on sources that are so flimsy i'm not saying us i'm saying bravo okay okay (laughs) no i'll trust anyone that you know just says hi to me but no i feel like if it's on tv it's got to be a good source right i know Uh, how about that scene where Teresa and dolores found themselves in a church I was like, uh, we're filming in a tr- chapel oh, now? Can I tell you guys something? What? I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I loved the fur coats in the middle of the night in a church. I was like, this is really? everything I ever wanted from Jersey. It was cozy. <laughs> I thought it felt fake. It felt oh, like yeah. they were oh, trying to yeah. make a That's moment. Liked I liked it. You I was like, you know it. what? At least like it, it, it feels fake, but it feels real. Like they're talking about like, <laughs> Which is all reality, so right. But really they're really talking about like, like this generation and that generation. Like they're really like, they're and, getting like, you into it. married in a, yeah, yeah. an Italian <laughs> man. And, yeah. and I was under his thumb. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. What about when Teresa was like, oh, well, what you went through, like I would never. And then uh, yeah. Dolores just like looks up I Jesus. know. <laughs> <laughs> like, Dolores is like, help me. <laughs> yeah, that was such an awkward moment. There was too much silence between those oh, two things. God. See, here's how Dolores did not play her cards right in terms of staying longer. And I respected it, but it shows that she has no business on the show, yeah. mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. like she mm-hmm. knows exactly what Kim D said. And two different times yeah. she didn't tell Teresa. Yeah. Dude, that's not going to stand, Dolores. No, no. We can't have that. No, no. you, you know, have to. If you, you have, see something, say something. Yeah, you have to do what Shannon did on OC, which is 100%. the minute Kelly said something the minute. to her about Tamara's you tell it, kids, and you, then you comfort. Yeah. <laughs> 
I was, the OC is amazing sh- at that. They yes. are the greatest yes. when They're, it comes to that. They're like, oh, really? It just happened? I'm going and i would mm-hmm. and yeah. I, you know and i'm this not kind sitting of, on that and this kind of thing this. you'd say oh they're chess players but no that's more complicated than OC. No, they're, they're checker players <laughs> which means they see the jump and they do they're it. connect four players <laughs> yes <laughs> you know yeah because dolores was just like i saw her thinking like yes. i can't say this to this person everyone saw it in her face we all yeah. knew what she was saying without saying it and i thought for shame dolores <laughs> yes yeah. where do you think you are dolores <laughs> open your mouth and know yeah know yeah. who you are play your part <laughs> Yes. <laughs> or get off the or stage. Get gone. <laughs> or get out of the church. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, New Jersey again. We, we're. There's not I'm, much. I'm starting to feel more comfortable with it. You're, I feel you. I, I, I liked the church. It felt interminable, though. Like whenever I look down at New Jersey, I'll think we're almost near the end. It's 26 I minutes know. in. Yes. And I'm like, ooh, this is a slog. A drag. Have we seen Siggy's husband before? I know we've seen her ex, but I. Have we seen her? I don't know. Isn't his name Tom as well? It's like Tom Campanella or something. Something, Michael. 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 I liked him. I did too. He was lovely, but we just haven't seen him. I was like, we've seen her ex-husband twice. Yeah. It felt to me like she had agreed he wasn't going to be on the show. And then halfway through, he relented. Yeah. Because everyone was like, my. Yeah. The little colonel party. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. What in yeah, the world? They, I've seen so many little why? kernels trying to be sold. On I, Shark Tank, they had a little kernel. I mean, there's always a little Popcorn's kernel. already small. Popcorn's yeah. already popcorn. I don't need it How to be smaller. How can we redo popcorn? Right. <laughs> like, I don't... I, if anything, I want it bigger. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would be great. Yeah. I mean, very generous that they're, you know, giving money yes, to charity. Yes, that's not my problem. No, my no, problem no, no, is, no, 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 no. is that it's popcorn. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know how. And it came out do. of the blue. I would have liked them to lay a few tracks so I could be prepared that we were going to have a po- little popcorn kernel launch party. Right. Did it you was, guys know about it? No. No. It was literally like <laughs> Envy Fashion Show, Posh Fashion Show, and then of course I'm going to the popcorn party. It's like, yes. what popcorn it's party? It's too many things. And then, many. then talking about Ashley's pregnancy, that I oh. thought Siggy w- head was going to explode when they announced <laughs> the pregnancy. I've never <laughs> seen a woman so excited about someone she hardly knows. <laughs> I know. <laughs> she was going crazy. I know. That's she why just, I'm like, is Siggy weird? Siggy's I think weird, she just loves she is, but she's happy. Great. I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but she, yeah. it was just a, she just like I thought I literally thought her head was going to pop off. It was weird. And, and Jacqueline just wants to have sex with yeah. um, every time I see that. Uh, what's her daughter's name again? Um, Ashley. Ashley. I've refused to, to drop Ashley into my life. Oh, her, yeah. her face no, keeps changing you. and that's hard. I just can't. But she does look better. Sorry. I disagree. Oh. I think she looks more. Uh, uh, no, what? I don't know. <laughs> I know. Play both sides of the line. <laughs> you don't know what side you're standing on. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, should we move on to OC or is there anything more about well, New Jersey? Well, I was just going to say, um, oh, I did think very quickly it was a sweet scene between Dolores and her mother. Oh, yeah. In the furniture store. I like Dolores as a human. I mm-hmm. think I would like her, you know, if I just met her on the street. I right. just think but she's, she's given us not enough. Yeah. I. I think that's it. The only other comment I wrote, which makes no sense, is I said, Siggy and Dolores would be fun if they were fun. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know what? That makes all the sense. Okay, great. I have one more thing, which was Kathy's outfit at the Little Colonel party was strange. Uh, shoulderless, of course. You know what? I didn't even drop Kathy in either. She was yeah. just on like the step and repeat. I heard Rosie like yelling at yes. one point. <laughs> But yeah, it was strange. If you get someone on the Facebook group had the nerve to say that they find Rich Wakili attractive. <gasps> that's vile. That's, that's so strange. Yeah, what? and I have strange taste, and yeah. that is I know real weird, unforgivable. Yeah. Well, let's take a break, and then when we yes. come back, we'll do Orange County. Yes. Guys, welcome back. Yes. One quick thing, and this is important, because we called Jill and we don't want, you know, her to find out about it because that will be bad for us. Do not tag her. We're not. Please don't. And Danielle and I've just been arguing because much like our parking um, (laughs) instincts, I'm like, it's fine. And And Danielle's like, like, we're going to get in trouble. (laughs) (laughs) We're being us. (laughs) So I would ask, and everyone's been so amazing. Literally, I've only seen one person tag one one housewife one time out of thousands of tweets and mentions. Yeah. This is a very safe space. 
I actually think Jill would be flattered. Yes. You know, we are genuine fans. We say lovely things and we are fans of hers. So but please don't tell her. Don't tell her. We called her on air and did not tell her. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now into OC. Wow. What an episode. Oof. What an episode. What do you think about OC in general? Oh, you guys, I only started watching the OC this year because of you. Um, I was a strictly New York Beverly Hills gal. Mm. And uh, I just obviously had to tune in. Yeah. Um, I love it. Wow. So much. And is this Isn't your it? first season? This is my first season. So I'm coming in kind of fresh. Yeah. Um, I got to say, I love Vicky. I'm with June. <gasps> I love her. Wow. Um, maybe because I don't know the history. Um, but, but you I, know who she is. I know, you know who she her is. She I know is exactly the who she her. is. And I just, I feel sorry for her. Um, and I do, I know she is the ultimate victim, but I do think like, She's fun. I I know she is fun. She's fun, but she's also not fun. (laughs) Yeah, totally. I yeah, but she's the she's all those things. You want her? She's the greatest kind of housewife. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. It's like a Luann. Like I hate Luann, but wouldn't want to live without her. Right. Yes. Yeah, I mean, she's the matriarch of this family. Yeah. She is. She's the OGOC yeah, she for is. a reason. Yep. She is. Um, but I do believe that uh, Kelly Dodd has borderline personality disorder. 100%. Like, and look, sure. we're not doctors. No. <laughs> Far from it. If anyone yes. would even thought, no one would think I was a doctor. I, my, the science, I had to take at NYU. I took broadcast journalism. <laughs> and, uh, I was my a- science was computer science. <laughs> 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 and that will not stop us from yeah. diagnosing. No, 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 no. I will say, that as last week I, I have softened on Kelly and I have softened on her again. What? Guys, I know she did not show I'm herself sorry, well. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. I felt sorry for her this I week. I felt really sorry I for her. Sorry for her. Even though she said terrible things oh and God. did not make a good showing and, and and if I had been on the other side of, of her saying those things about me, I'd be very pissed. But as an outsider and as a scientist uh-huh. <laughs> and a doctor and as a physicist as a computer scientist yeah. <laughs> Well, as a broadcast journalist, <laughs> the thing I was the most upset about was her flicking everyone's noses. Yes, that was, that was very annoying. She, because I feel like she's a child and she doesn't know how to relate to these she people. Doesn't. So she's trying to be funny and she's doing it in the most base, sad way like a child would do. And that's what made me feel sorry for her because I just saw her as a sad child. Yes. I do always feel bad when anyone's left out. Yes. I felt bad yes. about that insane. That that situation, and I will say in the beginning, I wrote this down. This was before everything happened, guys. Mm-hmm. I wrote, I like Kelly. Movies, wine, and Xanax. She's a pal. <laughs> I like how big she opens her mouth when she talks. Mm. It's alluring to yes. me. Yes, and I love her lip color. Yeah, and it's the opposite of Megan's tiny mouth. Yes. Oh, my God. Okay. So it's a nice anecdote, yes. anecdote for me. <laughs> you need that. But then I turned on her so hard. I... I I the deeper she got in, the ba- the worse I felt for her. What I know, and again, I shocked myself. But I've just she's saying jokes like "What comes before Part B?" Yeah. Part A. Let's make but like jelly and roll. This me, is someone you like. No, I don't like her. I don't like her. I don't either. like her. I don't want to be her friend. Yeah. I feel for her. Yes, I fe- she was trying so hard, so so. She hard. was doing accents, Danielle. Again, <laughs> a part of me worries I'm a Kelly. You know, like deep down, haven't we all made a joke that we just want to wish away? I think that's exactly how I, like it's it's like the part of me that I am like, it's not we're not Kelly's. No, but, God, no. But when you do, like you you have those moments where you're just like, I'm garbage. Yes. Or something. And then and you it, can't you relate. quite. Yeah, you can't quite. Oh, you can't get out fit of it. In and you're yeah. trying so oh, hard. God. You're trying too hard. Yeah. I just I, again, I don't condone what she did. No. The way that she strikes back at people. She would if she watches this back, which she has, I'm sure, over and over on repeat, and thinks she did a great job. But I don't know. It, I feel like she, she could has learn. an anger problem. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. You no, know, she's no, she's mentally ill. Yes. And I don't think her husband is at all. I think everything is her problem. That when I, I was watching that first scene with them, I my I said I Kelly is coming off like the jerk with Michael. I don't see how he's worse. I want to believe her, but he seems fine. He seems level headed. Like. Y- he definitely seems they both seem to have like alcohol problems yes. but I've never seen him blow. she's a nut you yes. guys she's like yeah. a powder keg yes. she is although I will say I, I 
Heather really fucking annoyed me yes. in the oh. ir- in the Irish pub. It's like, just drink, you idiot. Take the shot. Oh, she, I like hate her. Like, mm, yeah. it's so disgusting. She's like a little tight vagina. I hate her. <laughs> she, she is. Was. She's like, I can't believe we got kicked out of that store. <gasps> that was disgusting that that's was what exactly. Heather was upset about. But it really pissed me off. It's like, yes, Kelly's flicking everyone's noses and nobody likes her, but it's not hurtful no right it's annoying it's like disrespectful <laughs> what were they saying they were like it's disrespectful it's annoying it's annoying they, here's what happened they all got day drunk which as we know in this group is never a good idea. And but why, is, why is heather above it why can't she fucking get drunk because she's got to keep control and yes. maintain yes. her like Ugh. star status yes in her mind yes no she feels she's above watching them all. her show off that expensive umbrella to an assistant made me <sighs> so ill that, that she was. probably spent like $700 on. By the way, I think Shira was right last week when she said they don't have money. Why? When, when, because mm. um, someone, they're getting loans from people. I 100% believe whatever Kelly was saying. I don't think Kelly called around. I think a friend was like, oh, you know, they needed to borrow money for that land. 100%. Yeah, I could see that. Because they, they talk about money in a way where they're not a little bit embarrassed about it. And I think that that shows that you don't really have it. I agree, Nicole. Well, then we will watch this ball. Because I talk about it all the time. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) If I get it, I'm like, I have money. (laughs) I literally found a 20 in my pants and I jumped for joy as if I had never seen a 20 before. (laughs) I was over the moon. I like that when um, Kelly was getting upset, she her like the tactic that she took with Heather was to say like, you're Jewish. (laughs) Jewish people are supposed to be sarcastic and funny. That was tough. We can't defend that. That was tough. tough. (laughs) Although, in a way, it was a compliment. Oh, yeah. But I've gotten, quote unquote, compliments like that before, and they always feel like I'm marching. She's like, what? You love money. (laughs) You're money hungry. I know. It's it's like, uh, like when when those compliments happen, they just, a little shiver up my spine. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. It's not great. It's like, let me feel your horns. Come on. We know you have them. You're a unicorn. (laughs) (laughs) I am a little upset that Bravo didn't dig a little deeper and get some security footage from the store they were at. Yeah. Yes. Let's see the shove. We got to see that. Yeah, hair. to Although hear it. Although it was thrilling to hear it. Oh, it really was. Sometimes, you know what? Sometimes the hearing You're right. is be- like... It's like a horror movie. Yes. Soundtrack mm. is all you need. Yeah. <laughs> it mm. might have been underwhelming otherwise. It was the old Tamara went from... It didn't even take her a second to go to, no. from one to a million. It oh, wasn't... See, it was, it was she's still hidden way there. Too long. She's still hidden there. And you know what? Fuck Kelly for bringing up her kid. I'm I sorry. I yes, find it that was disgusting. Awful. Awful. She, awful. She shoots to kill. Yes. And that is wrong. Yes. You know what I mean? But she's also, I think, deeply stupid. I think she's just an idiot. Um, right. We've and, been underestimating her. She's but, so stupid. But it was also cruel. But it I was think cruel. Her, her, like, defending it shows how stupid she is, too. Like, she just doesn't But then understand. at one point she was like, I didn't even mean it. I was just, like, <laughs> saying something to Shannon. I know. But then, yeah. and then she had to call her husband, who she's been trying to get away from, and, like, she sees that he's her only respite. Oh, it was... It was her again, standing see- out on that stone balcony. <laughs> fixing her hair and makeup in the... In the yes. FaceTime was the dark. Oh, it was so dark. Oh, also Guys. her saying to that guy, me lucky charms oh, to the bellhop. Oh Again, there's another true hero. Well, this is your girl, guys. This is <laughs> no, who no, you no, love. No. <laughs> I know. I, again, I'm not saying I stand for her, but I don't stand against her. <laughs> I got to say again, I've said this so many times and the husbands are always like so backing up their women. Like mm. David would be like, what did you do? Why did you do it? I don't believe you. Literally, her husband's like, don't back down, babe. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you did everything right. <laughs> I know my husband's. Uh, the first question he has is like, well, what did you do? <laughs> I, yes, I think I Kelly know. to go there with Tamara, although Tamara, much like Vicky, I was completely on Tamara's side. I felt terrible for her. I cannot imagine if my child was not living with me, mm. I would, I wouldn't be, no. I would be just rocking myself no. like I was when Jill Zarin called back. <laughs> But at the same time, what where Tamara and Vicky go wrong is becoming too satisfied with the fact that they're in the position that people yes. feel sorry for them. And that's, that's gross. You're right. Yeah. That's true. I agree with that. They just need to chest their cards a little more. Mm-hmm. Also, I will say that during when they went to go work out, um, <laughs> which was so weird to watch. So weird. Heather 
lugged her workout gloves across the globe. Of <laughs> like, course she did. She fine, two bring pairs. a sports bra, bring a pair of Lululemons. But really, I need your gloves. That made me sick for some reason. Watching her lift that <laughs> kettlebell. <laughs> Doing triceps with the kettlebell turned my stomach so much. <laughs> I've turned on her so hard. I hate her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is, we are just letting it yeah, all out today. Really it feels are. good. It does. Yeah. It really does. This is such a good outlet for me to get anger out. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it is. At these people who don't know why we do exist. you hate her, Nicole? I hate her because I think she is the phoniest of the phony. Mm. I really think that like her whole life is just like a performance. Like she wakes up in the morning and she feels like, like, like a, like a cartoon bird is like on her shoulder. And she just, I don't know. I fucking hate her. You're so right. (laughs) And you know what? I really believe in her heart of hearts, and she, this might be unconscious, she thinks she's better than people yes. because she has more money than them. Like, oh, that's just how she exists in the world. For sure. Yeah, I agree. I agree. For sure. I'm down with that. Um, um, do you I love when Vicky is dancing with this guy. Oh, oh my God. And then her... Say it what it is. Molesting this yes. guy. And then she goes, I'm trying to be a good girl, but when you got it, you, you got, got it. it. Oh. Again, she's never looked better. She really looks she is amazing. She's looking good. She's feeling good. When you got it, you got it. When you got it, you got it. <laughs> do we When think- she yelled, nice ass! <laughs> to a man doing a river dance, I was delighted. It was so good. Did... Vicky send those flowers to herself. Yes, I wrote that down. <laughs> yes. And I did a, a sad face. Oh, you did. You, you did. Has a yeah, sad she face. Got her. <laughs> In that, did what yes. do you think? Thoughts on that? Most likely. <laughs> okay, yes. just you know. But Absolutely. she went wrong writing I love you. If yeah. she had just said have fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. The I love you was a real Do you know that the guy that she's dating is Roger Lodge from Blind Dates brother? Who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You're saying Roger Lodge like it's Barack Obama. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm dating myself here. Go back. Up, <laughs> so there used to be that show called Blind Date, like a yeah. dating show a hundred years ago when we were all babies. Like a game show? Yeah, it was like oh, a I dating know what you're talking show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The host of it was this weird kind of generic handsome guy named Roger Lodge. <laughs> oh okay. Look him up. The guy, the police officer that she is now dating is Roger Lodge's brother. Oh, no. Maybe I just got this on the Facebook rope and someone was just calling the brothers because they looked alike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. One of those two things is true. <laughs> and they're both acceptable and we will not fact check any of it. No. So according to us, that's his brother. Or it might have been someone from the Facebook group making a joke. Oh, man. Do you think Bravo paid for Megan? <laughs> Because that's Roger Lodge's brother. No, no, that isn't. That no. guy's too old. <laughs> wow. Um, do, did Bravo pay for Megan's like genealogy session? Oh, my God. Who uh, uh, gives a shit? Who right gives guys? a shit? Ugh. I was literally, this was a note I wrote down. I said, please, please, please. To myself, I wrote, um, all I can think this whole ep is please, please, please don't cut back to the genealogist. <laughs> please. Genealogists are like dreams. No one needs to hear about your dream or your genealogy. Yes. <laughs> If you start a sentence with, oh my God, I had the craziest dream last night, or let's talk about my genealogy, you should be shot. Yeah. Unless you find out you are like brothers with... Even then. Even then? It's like, yeah, we're all first cousins with Meryl Streep or whatever. (laughs) Like, no. I'd be interested to know if you were. (laughs) I probably am. I wrote, Vicky looks sexy and I hate myself. (laughs) (laughs) Vicky's a good time Charlie, and I love that about her. She is. Wait, Wait, can we talk... I, I know we saw it in the preview and everyone's seen this moment, but the moment... Of Shannon cradling <laughs> Tamara and the breathing and the Botox and the it was and the eyes and the eyes and the <laughs> <laughs> but like her face not move it was so dramatic <laughs> and then Shannon breathe breathe <laughs> oh. <laughs> so strange and you could tell even Shannon in that moment thought Ooh, I bit off a little more yeah. than I could chew maybe I shouldn't have told her this I should have pulled a Dolores <laughs> yes. Mm. Shannon pulling out that green sparkle. Oh I just love God. Shannon. I know. I loved her weird testimonial where she was like, what's more Irish than Shannon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's God. one of those. And I almost said actors and she's not. None of these people are actors. <laughs> well, you know those Heather actors? Dubrow. Heather Dubrow, you're right. Ugh. When they say like, I'd watch that actor read the phone book. Like I'd watch Shannon do all the exposition. Oh, she yeah. makes it so. She does. She's nice. always going up. Yeah. 
<laughs> all right, Linda. I oh, am right. Oh, they are brothers. Oh. Steve Lodge. Well, there you go, everybody. I'm sure Vicky's like, he's in the entertainment business. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is there anything else? Uh, you know what I did say? Has Jimmy been body snatched? Because I feel like when he was yes. on FaceTime with Megan and he was like, you look, you look amazing. Yeah, I was shocked. Yeah, I said, I'm uncomfortable with Jim being nice to Megan. Me too. I don't trust it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was strange. Like he I did go into a, a sing song on amazing. He's like, you look amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave that there. Right. <laughs> last thing I'll say is I do like this new kind of thing they did in the beginning which was like a quicker very upbeat packing montage mm. yeah I, you know I love a packing montage so I'm all true. about a packing it's the montage. anchor of the whole franchise yes. yes if we're not watching them packing what are we doing but what I liked doing? how it was like faster quicker poor Brianna though when she was packing with Vicky you could tell producers were like can you just go up and talk to your mom and just like ask her what's going on Brianna's like I don't have time like okay <laughs> okay two kids. she goes my thyroid is killing me like what are we she doing she goes here? mom what's going on on with everyone <laughs> so forced couldn't even give it her best effort everyone's so hard on Vicky though now the, the story is like well I hope my mom doesn't fuck it up with Steve Lodge oh. or whatever Roger Lodge like, <laughs> like Vicky cannot win with Roger Lodge's brother <laughs> <laughs> that's all oh. I know Mess. now I'm trying to think if there's anything oh. else when- oh I just said, what is happening to TV when Tamara's farts are a plot point? <laughs> I know. And much, I also felt- in that same scene, when they cut to Eddie and his arms were out in that tank top, I screamed. It was, <laughs> it was like, ah! <laughs> just, ooh. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, we get it, guys. You work out. Yeah, I know. They Well, they are all about working out. That's, that's what they live for. Mm. What did Eddie do before he did Tamara? Do we know where, what, mm. what his thing was? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I could see him like working for Xerox or something, but like in the corporate department. <laughs> like that's working for 3M, is that what that yeah, I don't know, you know what I mean? But like in the corporate department, but like uh-huh. traveling, like these, this is just like where I see him. And then he like busted out and was like, no, work out that I want to have a gym. I've always wanna, loved working out. I've always loved working out. I want to make my hobby and my pleasure my, my business. I think Tamara has gotten so into working out because I think she's had a trauma in her life, which is her daughter. Yeah. And I do see a lot of people and I've turned to working out where it's Mm. literally the only thing you can do to move to try to even just get through your moments is like work out. You need the endorphins. You Mm -hmm. need to like, Oh, I've had that. They go hand in hand. And I'm really like, feel like I touched down on that this week, which is like Tamara's gotten into working out and she's found Jesus completely based off this experience with her daughter. How could you not, how could you not stretch and reach for something bigger than yourself when you are going through a trauma? I really do feel for her. Oh my God. It's awful. What was the trucker hat she was wearing? uh, Another Megan original. (laughs) Well, this Hashtag like workout lady or something like. What was it? Tamara's? It was, it was tough. Yeah. (laughs) All that said it was tough that yeah one, but i'll it give her a pass yeah, thank you for giving her a pass <laughs> yeah i mean i i think that's it i just I oh ethiopian airlines yeah. to go to ireland strange and i don't like seeing the girls before the sun comes up where I, I don't need to see them like on the, the airport, airport curb in the airport i like airport i like the airport curb stuff oh you do here's why because i get to see them like at 5 a.m like i know that feeling i know what it's like to be at the airport at 5 a.m but you to weirdly have some energy yeah, where you just kind of like have these reserves and they actually have to do it with makeup though. Like mm. mine is always done like zero makeup oh, on. Yeah. So the fact that they have lashes on, it's like, okay. Yeah. Like, props. If anyone knows, please tell me, are they doing their own makeup abroad or are they hiring someone there? They're clearly not bringing anyone. I think Heather Dubrow brings glam wherever she goes. I need to know the answer to yeah, this. Yeah, that's a yeah. good question. It's a burning question. Like, obviously, in du- Dubai, the Beverly Hills Girls, Erica Jane brought sure, a team, as was necessary. But because we saw them, I'm wondering, like, uh, oh, maybe. I feel like, or Heather's been given, like, extensive lessons on how to do her makeup. I don't know. I feel like Erica Jane is proud of the fact that she's, like, a yeah. woman who brings a glam squad. I think this is what I don't like about Heather. She, like, hides it. Like, she's just like, I'm effortlessly perfect. And it's like, mm-hmm. fuck you. Yeah, you're like, not. I've got four kids. I've got a business. I'm an, yeah. it's like, you're know. right. You're right. No. When you're right, you're right. When you're right, you're right. Okay. Nicole, any final thoughts? Um, no offense, hillbillies. I really loved that mm. when Vicky said, no offense, hillbillies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's always got away with words. Yeah. Uh, and that was a pot calling the kettle just as, speaking of genealogies, yes. seeing yeah. Vicky's 
family with love. Yeah, with love. By the way, I come, I am a direct descendant from hillbillies. I'm just from sort of Jewish trash. <laughs> so there you go. And uh, I am from the Upper East Side. As uh, we know. <laughs> we know, Nicole. As we know. We know. Which is a different kind of trash. Yes. Um, Did yeah. you read that book, Primates of Park Avenue? No, I didn't. But that's... Hit too close to home? I uh, probably... <laughs> my, my father loved it. My really? father my father loved Primates of Park <gasps> Avenue. That's amazing. Call, like called me immediately. I think like Amazoned me over a, a copy. Did like, you read it? Not yet. Not as of yet. It's it, it's amazing. I mean, people should read it. It's, yeah. it's like an am I saying this right? Anthropological yeah. study, yes. truly, of done of a woman who moved to the Upper East Side from like Lower Manhattan and yeah. just trying to infiltrate the private schools and the moms and the wealth. And but then she kind of like becomes one of them. So I kind of felt nauseated by her mm-hmm. the whole time. Uh-huh. But it's kind of like if that book Odd Mom Out was like a it's so funny that my da- show was a book. My dad <laughs> after he watched the show, he's like, I've heard I like this show Odd Mom Out. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I mean, obviously the Upper East Side in. is my wheelhouse. Uh, you know, my dad is gone all in on the Upper East Side yeah. women raising children. Well, now I understand why he loves our podcast. He so does much. love our podcast. He likes the la- like he likes the gossip, likes the ladies. Wow. Like, yeah, but well, he also loves of, World War II, so that's where I get yeah. that from. Well, <laughs> exactly. Course. We've all gotten lessons from our fathers, <laughs> yes. it seems. Uh, speaking of books, very quickly. Yes, I am so happy to report, based on last week's podcast, in one week's time, these girls and uh, men are so on it. The Facebook group has developed an offshoot Facebook group called, I believe it's called Crime Whispering Aliens. Yes, it is. And it's a crime, a true crime, (laughs) true crime Facebook group that I never knew I needed. Crime Whispering Aileen's. There are 868 members. Wow. And I have to say I'm checking it more than the other one. Really? And a book club has sprung up. We will all be reading um, American Heiress. The Patty Hearst story. Oh, which I'm dying. Jeffrey I'm dying Tubin. To that. Yeah. He so, also, the guy who wrote that no. Jeffrey Tubin? Yes, I feel like he wrote something else big. But yeah, well, he's remember. actually a very well respected journalist. So okay. I'm excited and I don't feel shame for reading. No, I hear it's supposed to be amazing. Yeah, where we were like Oprah guys, we're starting book clubs, things are happening. Yes. <laughs> Thank and you guys so much for listening. Yes, thank you, Nicole. I just want to do one birthday shout out real quick. Um, there's a group of Whispering Aileen celebrating a 40th birthday in St. Bart's listening to the podcast <sighs> on Friday by the pool. Just hoping to wish Kim Ford a happy birthday on air from her friends. Happy birthday, happy Kim. Happy birthday, a Kim. 40th sent to St. me by Bart's. Jerry, oh, nice. uh, an old friend of mine from high school. So happy birthday. Happy birthday. I hope Kim runs into the pirate. Yes. Wasn't and he on St. Bart's? Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was. He was. Yeah, run into him. <laughs> Happy birthday. Guys, and what a treat. Yes. Oh, guys. Nicole. This was. Thank you for coming. Transcendent. And April, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Luz. Thank you to all our listeners. Thank you, John. Thank you, July. Thank you, everyone at Airwolf. This has been a great, great day for me. A great start to my yeah, day. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Casey. Bye, guys. Bye. What's up? This is Hannibal Burris, and I got a new podcast coming out soon on the Ill Wolf Network. It's called Handsome Rambler. It's going to be me talking about life on the road, sports, relationships, philosophy, books. Anything can happen on the Handsome Rambler. It's going to be an extravaganza. Check it out. The Handsome Rambler coming soon on the Ill Wolf Network. You know what it is. <sighs> This has been an Earwolf production, executive produced by Scott Ackerman and Chris Bannon. For more information and content, visit Earwolf.com. Earwolf.